Central African rainforest is the second largest tropical rainforest in the world, spanning some two and a half million square kilometers, roughly the size of Western Europe. It feeds 16 million people and is home to thousands of incredible species, some of which can only be found in this part of the world. It regulates rainfall up to the Ethiopian drylands and with tree trunks, leaves and roots that absorb the carbon we emit, the forest has a tremendous potential to fight climate change. Simply stated, without Central African rainforests, there would be no solution to the climate challenge and few chances to reach the climbing goals of the Paris Agreement. That's how this forest is vital, not just for the people of the Central African region, but for all of us, North and South, East and West. But we are losing this forest at an accelerating pace. One million hectares are lost every year. That's over two football fields every hour. Industrial agricultural plantations, logging, mining, and road constructions are destroying the forests at unprecedented levels. These destructive activities are worsened by lack of land rights and growing populations that need more food, shelter, and energy. In a region where tens of millions still live in abject poverty and malnutrition, this land holds unmatched potential. Its rivers could provide the whole continent with the direly needed electricity. Its ground is rich with minerals. But clearing the forest to access them will be an environmental disaster. The soil beneath its trees could feed the entire population. <laughs> but cutting down the forest and drying the pitlands would release nine years worth of global greenhouse gas emissions and would also disrupt rainfall patterns that are essential for food production. The governments of Central Africa are aware of this conundrum and find themselves at a crossroads. Should they allow and encourage the destruction of their forests to raise their people out of poverty and exploit lucrative but often short-sighted opportunities, just like the rest of the world has done in the past? Or should they keep all trees standing an option that many consider an obstacle to rapid economic growth. A third alternative path is possible, one where Central African economies can grow without chopping down forests and releasing greenhouse gases. In 2015, six Central African countries signed a declaration committing them to that alternative path. Some have already started. For example, the government of Gabon has created an unparalleled network of protected areas covering 11% of its territory and aiming to expand it to 21%. They have even diverted roads to avoid carving up these sanctuaries and are tapping into these areas for eco-tourism. The governments of Central Africa have started to reform their agriculture so that direly needed food and commodities are planted in savannas instead of clearing tropical rainforest to do so. But the interventions punctual ne suffisent pas. Des réformes ambitieuses, complexes et soutenues dans le temps sont nécessaires. To stop systemic forest loss and protect this exceptional treasure. 
mambo mugulu masilo baba duko ku mambo mona lu yakubinga mambo mugulu au delà de remèdes faciles et éphémères il faudra de la détermination de la persévérance et des choix parfois difficiles il faudra des partenariats constructifs sur le long terme basés sur un dialogue ouvert entre les gouvernements, le peuple autochtone, la société civile et le secteur privé. It also demands sustained attention, commitment and funding from the international community. And that's why international partnerships are more indispensable than ever. To ensure that the unique Central African rainforests remain the key to a brighter and cooler future for all of us.